Hi and welcome to part 28 of how to build the e-commerce website using Django and Vue.js. In this part I'm going to implement PayPal. So the first thing I have done is to create a new account at paypal.com. I also signed in to developer.paypal.com to get the credentials I need. I need a client ID and a secret ID. So before you do anything more you have to create the account here and get these yourself. They are found under my apps and credentials. So when you have done that you can copy the two IDs. I have mine two here already. So we can just copy those and go to settings.py. Then we can paste this below the razor pay and stripe and save. So the next step now is to install some software we need on the server. So if I go to the command line and stop the server I can install this by running pip install paypal checkout server sdk. This will install this software and some dependencies. And when that's done we can just run the server again. The next step now is to go back to the code and open up cart slash views dot pi. Because we need to access the PayPal API key here as well. So here I can add a new key, pub key PayPal settings dot PayPal API key publishable. I think I wrote this correct. Yes. So now we can access this in the front end. So now we can save this. And then the next step is to go to cart.html. Then if I scroll to the top here, I need to import one more script. So script type application slash JavaScript SRC HTTPS www.paypal.com SDK js client client dash id equals pub key paypal which is the variable we just added here and close the script tag next i need to go into one of the hooks from view i need to use the mounted so when this page is mounted i want to call this functionality const amount equals this dot total cost with coupon dot to string because we need this in string format and then I need to call PayPal by saying PayPal dot buttons on click I'll come back to this soon and on create order Sorry, it's just create order function data actions return actions dot order dot create purchase units amount value amount which is a reference to this one and below here we call on approve data actions use a fat arrow function from javascript can come back to this soon and on the bottom here we call dot render hashtag paypal button container and then we need to create a new div with this id so if i scroll up to the other buttons and inside here can edit sorry div id paypal button container and save before i continue i just want to say thanks to my patreons if you too want to support me you will find a link to my patreon in the description below so now we can go to the browser and check if this works just refresh i have added one product to the cart and now we have two paypal buttons below here just make this a little bit smaller. I want to add some space between these buttons. 
So if I append a class here, class empty four, which is margin top four, refresh, and now we have a little bit space there. Perfect. MT4 is the class from Bulma which adds some margin top. So when we click this button, we want to validate this form. To do this, I can just go down here to onclick. In here I can just say if this dot validate form is greater than zero, then return false. Because I do not want to continue if there are any errors. Console.log on click and console.log errors. Just want to test this. So if I refresh here again now, go up here, just take away the email, PayPal. As you can see here, on click and it's errors. So it did not continue to the payment page. So then I can just take away this. And save and then inside the on approve we create a new array const form data first name this dot first name and copy this last name and I want one for email this dot email I want the address Oops. And I want a zip code, a place, a phone, and a coupon code. And I want to set gateway to PayPal. So I have this in the back end. Order ID, data.order ID. This is something I get from PayPal, so we can validate the payment later. And then when we have this, we can say return, sorry, return actions.order.capture. So we capture when the payment is finished. Then function details. And then we need to call the back end inside here. And in here I can go down and then I can copy this from the stripe because it's similar code and just paste it in here. And then below here we say dot then function result window window dot location dot href cart success. So we redirect the user to the success page. If there are any errors we want to show this dot catch function error console.log error error like that. Then we can just close this and everything in the front end should now be ready. Except I need to replace form data with form data like that. So if I now go here, everything looks okay. If I refresh, okay, I get an error here. That's because I forgot to close this one. The f no, the return action. Refresh. Now I have the buttons and everything seems to be okay. And Every field here is okay, so if I click PayPal now, I get a new error. Action is not defined. Actions, sorry, one more typo. Refresh. And now I get the PayPal checkout page. I need to log in with a new email here. This is a test account. SB. Stay logged in. Okay, everything seems to be okay. Hi John, $15, but if I try to pay now, I will get an error here and I get back and the capture is called. 
okay but that's no problem because I knew this would happen because this isn't fixed in the back end yet so if I now go back to VS code and open up store slash api.py first I need to import the PayPal checkout SDK we created uh, now we installed earlier from PayPal checkout SDK dot core import PayPal HTTP client sandbox environment and I also need to import from the same package dot orders import orders capture request and then I can scroll down to the function create checkout session I can copy this and make an empty variable called payment intent and above here I can just say PayPal so we know it's PayPal payment here if gateway equals PayPal then order ID equals data order ID which is the one we added in the form data here sorry I think this might be a typo yes this is supposed to be data order ID like this so then I can go back here then I need to set up a PayPal environment I do this by saying environment equals sandbox environment client ID equals settings dot PayPal API key publish above client secret equals settings dot PayPal API key hidden client equals PayPal HTTP client and then I pass in the environment we just created request equals orders capture request pass in the order ID we got from PayPal response equals client dot execute request so now we check with PayPal if everything is okay in here I create a new order order equals order dot objects dot get pk equals order id and that order id I get from the checkout function up here and then I say order dot paid amount equals total price order dot used coupon equals coupon code and then I check if it's actually correct now if it's completed if response dot result dot status equals completed then I can say order dot paid equals true and order dot payment intent equals order ID it's a little bit confusing that I used order ID like this from from PayPal and I also use it for our order but it have to do for now then I can say order dot save and if it's not PayPal I can say else and move all of this in there and save and when everything is okay here I need to copy this two function up here the decrement order and send order confirmation can just paste them in here and save and if it's not completed we just want to set this to else order dot paid equals false order dot save so now we should be able to test this no module name paypal checkout sdk dot order okay sorry it was supposed to be orders in plural now everything is okay there just refresh so everything is okay pay with PayPal and then I use the PayPal balance 
I can also use a card if I wanted to do that. Pay now. And now I just wait for the capture. Okay, still get an error. Invalid client authentication failed. Okay, I just updated this. So let me check if it works then. Just refresh. Click, click PayPal. And then pay now. So let's cross our fingers. And now I was redirected to the thank you page. Perfect. So if I now go to the admin area, I see that I have an order here and it's marked as paid. And I go to payment intent, which means that everything from PayPal is working. Perfect. So now we have three payment gateways in our e-commerce website. And that was it for this part. I hope you liked it. And if you did, please click like below and share it with your friends. See you next time.